Perfect. Welcome to the Mizell Show. An inspiration for a new generation. Hi, I'm Alana Mizell, a loving mother of two, a devoted wife to Stephen, and an entrepreneur helping women realize their dreams and potential. And I'm Stephen Mizell, caring father of two, a devoted husband to Alana, and a driving force to help young men prepare for life after college football. And if that wasn't enough, we're a biracial couple. She was raised in the North, but I was raised in the South. The only thing normal about our lives. Who am I kidding? It's never normal around here. Join us for The Mizell Show. Right now. Hello there. Remember us? <laughs> that was weird. Don't do that. Well, it's Halloween, Don't right? It's like, a, it's like a Halloween episode. Creepy. Creepy Halloween <laughs> zombie. Oh, oh. Briggs is obsessed with zombies. Briggs is obsessed with zombies. Everything turns into a zombie these days. Right. I actually had, as you said, we're back, blah, blah, blah. But I had one of my coworkers ask me why we hadn't done anything yet. <laughs> Stephen just freaked out. The dishwasher's open by itself. I think I left it open. Oh, okay. I don't think I closed it open. Okay. Mm. It didn't just... Anyway, Zombies. so one of my coworkers asked where we have been, and life has just been crazy. So this fall, we have both of our kids in soccer. Yes. And it's not close to our house. No, and, and we we was kind of like, I don't know, this fall, I've had, I think we both had kind of like a, a we flashback. Learned a lot. We learned a lot. We also learned a greater appreciation for, I know I got a greater appreciation for my parents mm-hmm. in terms of carpooling and getting us around... And it made yeah. you reflect because we have both of our kids are, are playing soccer. Um, Briggs, this is his first year playing, and uh, Alana Mizell uh, signed me up to coach his team. Um, you know, the guy, the, the people that run it, we're good David friends Kaiser. with. David Kaiser, yeah. We're good friends with. Um, and he just said, he sent out an email saying that they needed some extra help. And I was like, oh, Stephen can do it. Oh, Stephen can do we're it. We're going to be there anyway. Yeah, but like coaching takes a lot of like responsibility. Like you're for two year old, two, three year olds. Hey, though his his team is full of personalities. It is. Oh, uh, but it is. But, but. I, I have appreciated though, and it has been it's been good. And I think also with Briggs first playing, I've been kind of a a good buffer because he might be one and done. Oh yeah. So <laughs> with all of that came, just it was just a lot. Yeah. It's a season we hadn't folk been through yet. Mm-hmm. And that's between Adele's playing football, flag football. Adele's also playing flag football. Yeah. And not close to our house. Nope. nope. 30, 45 minutes Community away. And then ways, I yeah. work about 30 minutes from our house. So it's just a lot of car time, a lot of less time at home, mm-hmm. a lot of more logistics. And we were just like, we don't want to give you guys have Z episodes. No. And we don't want to give our kids shortened bedtime routines yeah on some nights so we were just like we got to take a break till we feel like we can breathe so we're breathing we are breathing a little bit yeah a little on bit. an oxygen tank kind of thing uh, we're breathing but in the meantime of the breathing you know um uh we we like to change things up in the myzel house you know uh decor wise decor wise i and get bored my, so i move stuff around bored. constantly and, and Daddy uh, tries to help where he can. He also tries to move too fast when he helps. But also, here's what typically happens if Steven's not home. And I feel like there's a TikTok or a meme or something about this. Where the woman, like, moves the entire house around. And then when the husband gets home, they're like, oh, I can't move this. Yeah. That's what happened. Not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. From today. Yeah. Uh, we're moving a piece of furniture. Moving a piece of furniture. Which, mind you, we didn't empty before we moved and had all of my books in it. Yeah, but here's here's the, here's the pre-setting to it. So we only need to move it like less than four inches because it just needed to come off a rug. It wasn't like a move across the room. Right, it like, right, right. right. It was so like we're barely little, lifting. Barely lifting off the rug. This piece of furniture. Just pull the rug and I'm it. like ready to pull the rug up underneath it. Yes. Like quick, we're, we're selling there like we're getting a new rug. And I hear... <laughs> Yeah. And I see Steven's face. He's panicked. Panic. I think, I think the rug has broken. Nope. Ripped. Nope. 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 That was Steven's bicep tendon. Ruptured my bicep, moving a piece of furniture. Yeah. Right. And so I was, of course, making fun of him because I didn't, we, at the time, we didn't know it was ruptured. I was panicking because I heard it and I thought he my was arm was out. just he like was doing dangling, his tap, tap. dangling by itself. But I was like, he oh literally my said, goodness. Is it attached? And I was like, 
I mean, what what do you mean? Yeah. The rug's fine. The r- <laughs> and I was like, that wasn't the rug. That was something that in was my, my elbow, elbow is what we thought it was at the time. Yeah. Um, so fast forward, Stephen goes to Campbell Clinic here Campbell in Memphis. Clinic that following Monday. So the, that Sunday had happened. Monday he goes to Campbell's Clinic. They say, oh, no, you got to go see a specialist. Monday afternoon, he goes to the specialist. The specialist says, I don't even need an MRI. I know what this is. I've got an opening on Wednesday for surgery. So in a matter of four days, yeah. we've ruptured a bicep, and now we have surgery. Yeah, a matter of four days, you know, he was able to to do the fill test, and he was able to fill it and see it, and it was – um no, but it was like one of those things that happened so fast, and I am grateful for all the people over at Campbell Clinic because it mm-hmm. happened – Monday, specialist. The specialist was real nice, real good. He touched the elbow. He said, yeah, I don't need to do anything. I know you need surgery. I can feel where your your bicep has literally detached from where it was supposed mm-hmm. to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said, do you want to have surgery on Wednesday? I'm like, no. Like, this Wednesday or yeah, next Wednesday? Yeah, you said next Wednesday. He was like, no, this Wednesday. And mindful, we are all during fall break. And we're in fall break mode. The kids are home. Mm-hmm. Um, Alana has taken some time off for the first time in a long time just mm-hmm. with her new job. And now I'm having surgery on Wednesday, and it was just a lot to process. Mm-hmm. But the doctor was really good at explaining things. He talked through like you know if you if you rupture your bicep, you know with the scar tissue, if you wait longer, it could be a, a, a longer, uh, recovery more recovery time, yeah, more recovery time, or even maybe a more difficult surgery. And so it was um it was quite the doozy, yeah. But you've done your bicep. We've had surgery. Yeah. Kids are home, blah, 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 blah. What do you think is one of the biggest takeaways from your surgery? Ooh, one of my biggest takeaways from my surgery is the, man, the gut-riching feeling that, man, I was doing the most in the house. I was trying to overcompensate for, for everything in terms of, there's a fine line between being a, a good supportive husband and doing things here and there, And then just trying to do everything and not letting you help me or help our family. Mm -hmm. And so I would say I was being, I was doing, as a kid, you you doing the most. I was doing the most as a husband. Right. So I think there's a difference between trying to do it all Mm -hmm. and being a partner. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Um, And, you know. And that was the most terrifying thing about the surgery was like, oh my goodness, I am not going to be able to do everything, and now I'm putting more... That's what you were the most afraid about? I mean, I, know, I, was, I was, of course, afraid about a huge needle going to my neck and numbing my arm and going under. You didn't know about that until you were in there. Yeah, that was, that was uh, terrifying, but... Um, but that's what you were the most afraid about, I would was say not the, being able to help. I would say probably one of the top three things, yeah, because here it is, fall break, when you plan for this, the kids are home, and all of a sudden... I am the cause. But is it just fall break, though? Because I think you would have still felt that way. So let's let's play this out yeah. in our family for people that do not live know with us and probably think that we evenly split everything in our house. Well, we do now. But, um, okay. You now, though? I mean, you're still taking care of me, so I mean, like, I, I still think I'm not okay. back to him. Okay, well, you were, about, you were about to clap back. That look you was I was like, <laughs> excuse me? I, I was about to, s- I wanted to say, I am recovering, <laughs> so I'm still not able to do. Uh, okay, so <laughs> almost four years ago, Briggs was born. Yeah. And, well, back up. When I was super pregnant, you started to help just because I like, couldn't breathe humans in my lungs and all that. Yeah. So then after Briggs was born, I had postpartum depression and that kind of thing. So Stephen's response to that. Well, even before that, mm-hmm. but a student's kind of response to my, my like struggles yeah. of all of those things and like my stress functions is I'll just do more. I'll That's do his more. solution. Yeah. And even growing up, that was kind of your solution because you saw with your mom, if I can help her do things, then it helps yeah. her help his parents own a business. So it helps her be able to go back to the business and those kinds of things. Yeah. Even I think. In my human nature, because even in my friend group, I was always the, I always wanted to try to be the glue between the the groups or th- yeah, I, I agree mm-hmm. with that yeah yeah I, that's hundred percent. So kind of like the mediator, yeah. that kind of person. If you're familiar with an enneagram, Stephen is an enneagram nine. I'm a nine. Uh, like 
a nine 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 nine. Exactly. Um, and so really much so that mediator wanting to make sure everybody's okay, but like nothing is too big, nothing is too small. Mm-hmm. Everything, if everything can just stay the same, stay same. Yeah. If we can just coast. We're yeah. all gonna be fine. Yeah. And that's kind of where Stephen lives, and that's his happy place in his brain. But he will run himself into the ground. And yeah. I am a three. Yeah. So I will let you run yourself into the ground as long as I can get where I need to go. Ooh. Legit. Yeah. That, I mean, that's just how I'm developed. It's something that I've got to pay attention to. Yeah. And so what we learned from this surgery was just how much I had started to let Stephen do mm-hmm. because I felt like it. And, <laughs> and, I, was I, and I was uh, enabling, enabling you to, you do, to so. do so. Do so. Yes. Right. So it was a perfect storm. It was a perfect storm, girl. And it girl. just kept festering. And then Stephen was with football for so long and I was doing so much at home that when he would come home, he would do so much more. And I'd be like, that's fine. I have these kids all the time. And so it would, it just was like this snowball. Have, it was, not, it, have you seen like a video of like a dung beetle? I know that's gross, but like as they. It, like, it's bigger. It's, it, it, right. It was a Super Bowl commercial a while back too. Like the girls is getting everything. You know, it's like just yes, kept snowballing. It's just it was snowballing. If you look at it through our, we had a conversation about this recently before we decided to do a podcast. And it was like a, an awakening for both of us. Like that was like the perfect storm. Yeah. And then just a pause. It, yeah. Some people struggle with this. I, not only with football, I had what some men and women struggle with. It's called career guilt. Mm. And you're like, hey, she's letting me start my own company. She's letting me chase my dreams. So that's what? I'm going to wake up earlier. I'm going to do more because Mm -hmm. she has the kids or she's letting me chase what I want to chase. And the whole time, Alana never said, hey, you do more because you ain't here. Or Or (laughs) little did what we kind of talked through was... I loved it that way. Yeah. Like, I I will never change for the world how much oh, yeah. time I got to spend with my kids at those ages. Yeah. Never for the world. Mm-hmm. And I would do it all the same all over again. But we got to this situation where our house is not balanced and there's frustration brewing underneath. And then the catalyst is this kind of like this hinging eggshell called my anxiety and my depression. Mm, yeah. So Stephen does more to make sure I don't have a panic attack and my de- depression doesn't swing. And every time my clinical depression goes up and down, up and down, he like chimes it in and doesn't really necessarily ask, well, mm-hmm. what, what can I help you with? And last Sunday I got up and for the women that like to get overwhelmed and then they clean everything, y'all, I cleaned the entire pantry, took everything out. And Stephen just, he had to sit there, you guys, which is, it's a good help. I dying. couldn't help. I was dying. My arm he is in the cast. Dying. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to let her do her thing because hindsight, the mm-hmm. first time in a very long time, my wife was free yeah. to be able to do the motherly household, taking care of things. And this whole time, we have been struggling with um, what makes a lot of quote unquote happy or feel mm-hmm. good. I was like, oh, I'll just bring you coffee in bed. What refuels you, me? What, what refuels yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. you can just read and you can just stay in the room. Yeah. And what we learned was, yes, coffee in bed does make me super happy. Me reading does make me super mm-hmm. happy. Me resting in our room does make me super happy. The amount of time I was doing it <laughs> yeah. is out of control. Yeah. Uh, and that's not who I am. Like, I've always been a driver. Mm-hmm. I've always been a busybody, and somewhere along the line, we just stopped that. We just stopped it, and and we just I quit. and I thought it was the the thing to do, and we but have both of us did. both of us. And 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 the crazy thing is, guys, we we have a, as you know, some of you know, we have a son named Briggs, and Briggs will get up at six o'clock one day, and the next day he will hit the ground running at three thirty. And with mm-hmm. my arm, a lot of we talked to talk to Briggs and say, "Hey, Briggs, you know what? If you need to come in early, come get mommy." And believe it or not, I feel so. Even though <laughs> Briggs is coming and getting her at 4.30, 4.15, 5, when Daddy usually wants to be that person and let Mommy sleep, Alana has been more refueled waking up and spending really early times of the morning with Briggs mm-hmm. that I, not to say was taken away from her, but I didn't share it. We didn't say, hey, you know, this time I'm going to be going to the gym. So can you, it was, it was always right. me, me, me. And she never had that appearance. That and what it had gotten to was almost a level of resentment towards Briggs. Yes. It was a, for Stephen, and I was happy as Lark, so I was sleeping. Yeah. Uh, but Stephen was getting to where, I'm just so frustrated with him. If I can't get to the gym like I'm frustrated, it would be a Saturday. 
I haven't gotten to the gym. I need to go back to the gym. Like that was Steven's escape route. Mm -hmm. And now, and I would also try to now change my gym routine so I could try to get back before he wakes up because I didn't want him to wake you up. Like right, yeah. And it's just like it's fine. Yeah. And sweet nug, I don't, I don't know if it was because I spent more time with him when he was a little, little, but he just takes me more seriously. He does. Um, and I, I don't mess around. A lot of his even options. And all no, of a sudden, no. I wake up some days when Steven was taking taking him in the morning. And he's got 76 toys out in the living room. And I'm like, no, bro. You can sit your butt on this couch and watch a show that I pick out for you. Like, that's it. That's it. If you're going to get up, And he's like, really... when do I have breakfast? Not yet. If yeah. it was Steven, he'd be on breakfast three. Me? Yeah. I'm like, at the end of this show, and I finish my coffee. Did you know that I sell makeup? Not only do I sell makeup, but the makeup that I sell is 3D makeup, which allows you to highlight and contour your face in a super simple compact. As a mom, I could not survive without my simplified routine. Not only that, but it's exactly what you need, exactly when you need it, all in one spot. Go ahead and check out Alana Mizell on Instagram or alanamizell.com to learn more. What is so funny is, you know, January 1, everybody has these, okay, New Year's, new you, blah, 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 reset, yeah. da, da, da. Well, we had a mid-year. Was it even mid-year? Yeah. yeah. I mean, a little over mid-year, kind of finishing out the last quarter strong. Last quarter review. And fourth Shame. quarter. Reset. What are you going to call it? You're going to hit the profit margin. <laughs> yes. Um, right now, or a couple weeks ago, we were not hitting bonus structure. Let's just say No, we that. were not hitting we bonus structure. We were barely making plan. Yeah. Um. And it's allowed us, well, forced us to just, like, sit and think and reevaluate. And even yesterday, we were in the car. We actually, well, let me back up. Through this, Stephen also said, I want more time with you. And I was like, what do you mean? I see you all the time. And quality time is both of our love languages, but different forms. Like, I just have to sit in the same room and generally be around people, and I'm good. Stephen needs, like, one-on-one -on -one quality time. I love the one-on-one -on -one time. The one-on-one -on -one time. And so through that, what we realize is we're not utilizing our time the best way we can. Either one of us. Yeah. One of which, if I've got, if I'm going to read, I need a time limit of like 30 minutes. <laughs> yes. That's step one. <laughs> yeah. Step two, my phone's not going to be with me because then I derail and do something yeah. else. Step three, why aren't we both, some, some days work from home, why are we not leveraging that hour lunch to spend yeah. Quality time with each other. Exactly. And then why are we not having on the schedule time where babysitters are coming that our kids love to hang out with? Like generally speaking, our kids don't want to see us all the time. And day dating, which is what we got to do yesterday. And what we've realized is there are some fundamental things that him and I see differently. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. But if we didn't come to this conclusion that the weight was very much off in our house for, I want to say, the wrong reasons. Yeah, for the wrong reasons. And I, and I, I agree the wrong reasons, but I also think the having both of us be very open and apologetic. Like, I apologize to you just wholeheartedly because I was mm -hmm. enabling it. I mm -hmm. thought I was, quote-unquote, giving you what I wanted without what you needed without talking about it. Yeah. And you apologize for me for letting me just kind of continue and carry everything. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, through this time, you know, Alana was super appreciative and she said the thank yous, but then it was like, we went back to the same structure. We never talked about right. the weight of it or how we it was We never going. talked about the what was breaking. Yes, exactly. Um, And I guess one of the biggest things that I found paralleling from a scripture perspective is that shepherds, in the field of flocks, if you have one that kind of runs away, a uh, sheep, they literally break their legs. So that way the sheep has to be over the shepherd's back. Mm -hmm. And there's a part of the imagery of Stephen's literal bicep tendon rupturing and breaking. And the reality that the foundation of our marriage has not truly been leveled in mm -hmm. what Christ has called us to do as a partnership and not a almost like this feeling of like, I need you to survive. Yeah. And I need you to be able to function. I need you to be able to do these things so that my mental health is satisfied. Yeah. And that's just not healthy. No. And any marriage. Any um, marriage. 
And so we're still digging through that. But we felt like it was really important, whether you're new in your marriage, we're about to be, we're almost at year 10, which 10 is years. crazy. Yes. Um, to be reflecting on it. Of course, it's going to change. Us as humans have changed drastically. I'm a totally different person than when we got married. What? Yes, yes. Like a totally different human. And I think it's important to reevaluate and ask those questions. What could I be doing? What's also interesting at the same time. Sorry, this is a whole nother thought. At the same time at work, I've, I had my year, my little year review thing. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting is I feel like in marriages, you don't do that. No, but marriage- to run a successful managerial Company. partnership. Partnership, yeah. You have to have a year in review. And I think, but the thing is, I think with marriage is you have these little mini sessions that something will come up, you'll talk about it, then you'll move right on, but it's not like a sit down, dedicated, focused review in which you mm. both can talk about it. Mm. You'll do like these little mini hiccups, talks here and there, and then it's either those work or it goes to marriage counseling. So yeah. it's not the, the intermediate which, kind of piece to it. Which the way you just said marriage counseling, I think is aggressive. So... I don't think there's anything wrong with marriage counseling. I don't think so Because I think it allows what you just said. It's a third party pushing in and saying, right, but what do you need? What do you need and what do you feel? Like pulling out the information from the spouses. I think one of our our most healthiest conversations we've had in our marriage is when your therapist called us in to talk together about our transition of the careers. And it was really fruitful. But I I think now, looking back on it, I appreciate it more. Mm. But I think we just wanted to, you know, take this time to to let you guys hear, A, of all, what we've been up to. Hopefully it doesn't take a ruptured bicep for you to, (laughs) um, to take the time to have a little mini- relationship or friendship review and or have fourth quarter reset fourth quarter reset i think that's, yeah. that, that's great fourth quarter reset we're just we're just out of the 90 day mark left in the year so you've got what two months left two months 60 something days 60 days make it count make it count so if you guys are enjoying this definitely leave us a review Give us the feedback. If there's something you guys want us to talk about, reach out to us on our website at themizelshow.com. There is a contact section. You can put it in there. We would love to hear about it. Or you can always go over to Instagram at themizelshow. Also, as always, don't forget to screenshot this episode and just add it to your stories and tag us on Instagram, on Facebook at themizelshow. Thanks, guys. Are you loving The Mizell Show? Well, we love you all. And did you know that you can have me and Steven talk to your team or a group of 25 of your friends? All it takes is 25 people showing up on either a Zoom call, a Facebook Live, or really anywhere, hopefully in person sooner rather than later. But how do you get us? So all you have to do is email themizelshow at gmail.com or you can direct message us on Instagram at themizelshow.